Welcome back. You're watching Breakfast. Our next guest grew plants on his bedroom windowsill when he was a little boy. Now he's all grown up <laughs> and is a botanist at Oxford Botanical Gardens and travels the world to see the most weird and wonderful species in their natural environment. Uh, Chris Thorogood is on a mission to challenge any sort of perceptions and I suppose preconceived ideas mm. about plants being boring. Delighted to say he's with us now. Morning. Tell us Good what. morning. And I mean, this isn't boring, is it? You, you've brought some <laughs> wonderful specimens in with you as well. I have done. I got some strange looks as I came up to the studio <laughs> with these giant <laughs> flowers in front of me. But um, no, that, that's right. A lot of people, when they think of plants compared with animals, might think that they're a bit dull or ina inanimate in some way. And really what this is all about is challenging that perception and showing a different side to plants. And for anyone watching earlier who was slightly worried about Mike, that's the, <laughs> the big one that Mike nearly fell into, he, <laughs> yeah. he believes. What is that? So this is my life-size replica of Rafflesia. It's the largest flower in the world. Life-size? Exactly. So this is how big it grows. So that, how, long, how wide would you say? So what, a metre and a, a, a metre and a metre and a half? across, yeah. It's, it's absolutely wow. huge. Um, well, yeah. how, how does that work? What does it do? So this is a giant vampire plant. So what I mean by that is it steals its food from other plants. So it silently grows underneath the rainforest floor, um, tapping into the roots of other plants, stealing its food from tropical vines, and then it erupts through the forest floor and produces this enormous flower. And it has no leaves or roots uh, because it steals all of its food from other plants. <laughs> uh, it, do you know what, one of the things I found really interesting actually it's related to the most one of the most innocuous plants yeah that's as right. well that's right, tell yeah. us more about that because you think that this is going to be mm. A breed all, all on its own. But what yeah. was it related to? It, um... it really baffled botanists what this plant was re related mm. to, in fact, um, because it looks so different to all other flowering plants. But actually, once we looked at the DNA, uh, we found that it's more related to euphorbias and poinsettias, things which have uh, small flowers. So it, it really was a surprise. This is your stuff so you the, find in the garden. The, 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 the one Christmas, Christmas plant. That's right, yeah. <laughs> right, OK. It's got, and it does, there's, a, there's a touch of the poinsettia about it, isn't there? <laughs> Maybe. You brought some other bits and bobs in with you. Yes, I, I want have, you to talk yeah. about the, the hidnora. Which one's the hidnora? Hidnora. So we don't have hidnora. Nora here because okay, you can't right. actually grow it so I've painted it. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes. You can't grow it? You can't but no one can really grow some of these plants and that's the that's the mystery. So Is that's, that a real plant? It, I promise you it's real. People think I've made these things up. I haven't. So that's my painting of an unusual plant that grows in the deserts of southern Africa. How Isn't many of those have you seen? So I've seen I've seen this one um, travelled through a little bit of South Africa to find this but few people have been lucky enough to see that. It's very rare. Why has it got teeth? Those aren't, those aren't teeth, actually. <laughs> but it does, it does trap insects to pollinate it, and that's uh, key to many of these plants. So, again, when we think of plants as being a bit dull or ina inanimate, some of these are really exciting. So I've got one here um, that's been on my front doorstep this weekend, and it's been teeming with insects because it produces a sweet, yes. sugary nectar, um, just like normal flowers do to attract bees and other insects. Um, but the nectar in this one also has a drug that intoxicates insects and makes them drowsy, and then they tumble down into the pitcher, and um, I might even open one up, oh. you know, it's fine, it will grow more, but we'll just have a look at what so it's been eating. Point it towards camera four for us over okay, there, I'll you turn, turn it round. Oh, turn right. it actually six, just actually this six, one here. This one, that and hopefully it's full of stuff. Yeah, so there are some, some nasty little dead wasps and flies that it's been eating. Um, it's quite a hungry plant. Oh, my gosh. oh yeah. Can you actually, let's just make sure they can see that on yeah. that, it's that so it's, camera it's, it's, right full, it's full of dead insects. Um, so, so they've these, all been drugged and sort of just... Uh, tumble down in there they and then, and then down just slowly into... compose. Exactly. So they, they, they tumble down into a pool of digestive enzymes at the bottom and then it gives nutrients to the plant. You know, plants are so fascinating. So it's the story such as, I was looking at reading your book and um, stories such as, so there's one plant that get, puts waxy substance mm. on the feet of yes, insects. Yeah. We've so they become, all, got... they become all heavy it and just so happens. slippery. It just so <laughs> happens. You have one. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so this is another one. Get this one out. So this is a tropical pitcher plant, and it produces these these really beautiful traps like this. And this slippery surface at the top here, um, it um, attracts water, and the water forms a, a film of condensation on the surface, and it makes it very slippery. And insects aquaplane down off into it again into a pool of digestive juices. So this is a trap um, that uh, attracts insects. Um, which the plant then kills and digests and it feeds the plant. Um, so this is a pretty sinister side to, to the plant kingdom. I've got to be careful how I say this, the flying duck. <laughs> yeah, the flying duck orchid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we don't have one of those. That's another one of, of my paintings. That's a peculiar um, little orchid that looks just like a duck in, in mid-flight to our eyes. Um, but it produces a fake pheromone that smells just like a, a seductive female insect that male insects become confused by and they try to mate with the flower and as they do so they get headbutted against the part that, that produces the pollen and so they pollinate the 
flower. So it's a, it's a fraud, it's a decoy to fool these poor insects into bringing about its pollination services. As well as being great hunters then, mm. I think it's fair to say, they're amazing, they've evolved obviously incredibly well. But they're really clever as well, because I always wondered, particularly with things like mm. this, is this the Venus flytrap? That is, fly that's trap? the one, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is a Venus flytrap. Yeah. I'll, I'll pop that up and um, we can have a look. But, so usually if you touch them... Yeah, go ahead. Um, if usually if you touch them, mm. they, they do automatically close, don't yeah, they? Yes, so if you touch the inner part there. But what makes... Oh, yeah, oh, there, there, we go. Go. there we go. There we go. What, well, can you do that again? Make, okay. can you do, let, let me get one so yeah. we can get it to the camera. And, and Which it, one? It, it, it will count, actually. Ready? So Ready? If, if you touch it once, it won't close, but if you touch it again, it, it will. So well, that's this the part is what I was going, count to two. This is what <laughs> I was going to ask, for you, ask about, because sometimes if leaves are dropping on exactly. plants, you know, you don't want to waste the energy, do that's you? That's exactly it, Nagy, yeah. So, so this has evolved as a safeguard against energy wastage, so it doesn't want to be closing in on any old thing, and it makes sure that it's likely to be closing on an insect, which is a nice tasty meal for the plant. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about as well is the fact you, you said you're an artist in addition to this, so quite a few of these things we can see that you've, you've drawn in the That's book. That's right. Do you think that, uh, you said right at the start about plants being boring and trying to change that mm, perception, mm. how do you change that? Is it through books like this or do you think mm. there's, a, there's an appetite for learning more about these sorts of things? There is an appetite, um, I think, Dan. I think people are fascinated by plants. Um, but I think we can help that by showing people a different side to plants. Mm. I think people sometimes compare plants with animals and they think that they're perhaps a little bit more dull or in inanimate. But actually, there are some fascinating plants out there. Is there one you haven't seen that you'd like to see? Oh, goodness. Um, there are so many <laughs> that I'd like to see. Um, Book two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that'll be the next book. Um, but, but there is a, a more serious message here, I, th I think, yeah. as well, because um, when we talk to people about endangered species, um, they often think about um, rare animals. But actually, um, possibly one in five species of plant worldwide is threatened with, with possible extinction. Um, and that's a really um, serious message for us all, because we rely on plants. And so it's really important that we excite and inspire a new generation of botanists. Brilliant. And the book, which is definitely not boring, is called Weird Plants. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, I need to correct myself. We spoke to the wonderful um, Captain Jimmy Lang, um, MBE, earlier this morning about the stammering documentary. Um, it's on Forces TV on Wednesday night, so television. Forces TV right. Wednesday night at 9.30. Uh, we shall be back from 6 o'clock tomorrow, but right now it's time for Animal Park Summer Special on BBC One.